Hello and welcome back to another episode of Divinity Original Sins 2, the Definitive Edition. My name is Saiken and we're playing on Honor Mode Difficulty Plus, uh, difficulty higher than the highest difficulty, uh, where we are scaling the enemy to our level and adding two additional levels on top of this. Uh, since the last time I've played a bit in the background and I was uh, debating with myself whether or not we want to add a few of the fights here in the random will uh, the random fights in the wilderness but in reality guys the only thing that I did is I marched all the way here to the base camp and in the hideout Besides having conversations with the NPCs, I used the time to equip everyone. So we're now firmly level uh, 9 and got a couple of items. You can see that our tank, uh, he's not a tank, he's a controller, that our controller has over 200 uh, physical armor. With both of our mages, I switched to shield plus wand. So you can see both of them also 150 to 200 uh, physical and magical armor. We got some more skills um, and I really uh, rapidly crafted um, arrows. So we're uh, up to uh, 54 poison arrows, which is going to help us going forward. You can see just from the skilling perspective, um, the core skills are still absolutely the same. We also skilled the same stats. Finesse for uh, Ethan. Losa uh, went up with intelligence a little bit. Um, we continued uh, Finesse and just the minimum amounts of um, uh, intelligence uh, to to carry the items. And Saiken also went up with intelligence. So that's really it. What are we going to see in today's episode? Um, the reason why we wear starting here is right at the entrance to the mysterious cave we are going to take a closer look into Bracco's Rex um, who is going to be a difficult fight the mage who is essentially Tromtoy uh, who is essentially uh, protecting uh, the cave of Bracco's Rex is playing his mind games and there are going to be a few fights in here which might be interesting so by the way first thing that i recommend to you when you're uh, walking in the open is go into formation and often it resets so this is exactly wrong this is not how it's supposed to be i highly recommend taking a widespread formation the reason why um, why I would want uh, you to, to do that is essentially it prevents you from being clus uh, clumped up and uh, being hit by an AOE effect. This formation here is far enough away that not all four of your um, heroes will be hit at the same time and you're going to be way better off using that. So I'm highly recommending that as a tip. Nice, got a really good arrow here. So we're coming up to the first um, real fight that we're going to see. As always, try using the high ground. Didn't I tell you to leave? There we go. That's the first fight. We've leveled up enemies. Uh, the enemies are now level 11, as you can see. Tromtoy 1, Tromtoy 2, and Tromtoy 3 over here. Uh, what... I would want to do is I should have probably um, summoned the incarnate first but I would want to do is I'd like to get all of the trump toys together in one place Lowe's uh, moves here to the edge can we get this trump toy no we can't okay so instead this Tromtoy will act very soon and I would like you to go down there. That deals 100 damage, so 50 each. And he's probably going to reposition himself Yep, with tactical retreat, but that's fine.
Good. We're trying and we're trying the exact same thing again. Let's move up. Let's get him down there. And for the sake of using our points now, I don't want to do that. Instead, what I want to do is already spreading some wings makes our movement way faster in the next turns. By having the high ground here and not walking through that area, the magical trump door needs to get down and there we go. Everyone is finally at one position. Great. Jumping. Looking at the armor, <laughs> he's already at 750 armor. Oh, this is insane, but their physical armor, at least for the archer and for the magical trump toy, looks reasonably, uh, reasonably good. So let's use stuff that's going to hit everyone. Little trap there. The poison set of arrows hits everyone. I might want to use another poison set just because the damage is so good. All three of them are being hit. Alright, that was a one shot. Interesting. There is a clear disadvantage in in using uh, glass cannon. Seville had a decent uh, decent defense, but she simply got completely and utterly one shot. So we're healing ourselves. Decent damage. I am just wondering, probably, well, that's good enough. If she stays back here, we'll be able to still deal damage with her. Gosh, that's a lot of damage. Even Losa takes a substantial amount of damage. Going to put uh, evasion on ourselves to make our, uh, to make us immune to physical hits at least for one round. And we're healing ourselves up. All right, let's get rid of the remainder of armor. This trump toy here has no more magical armor. <laughs> he hits Seville for 50% of damage. just with the global cooling. And mind you, global cooling is really not a powerful, like damage-wise, a powerful spell. This is going to suck. The fights here are going to be really, really difficult. Okay, we got a 
unstuck, unfreeze Seville. Doing this with um, uh, with armor, and we probably also got to heal a little bit. I am just wondering. Yeah. I'm wondering if we should teleport him back down there. Which wouldn't be the worst decision. Or alternatively, I mean, we could... Teleport him down here. It's probably even a better decision. We're moving Seville away and teleporting him down there. So, Seville gets living on the edge, which means she cannot be killed for one turn. But it doesn't mean we don't need to heal ourselves. There we go. So, by the way, this trump door here. If we move all the way over here, it's too... Uh, two points of investment, we can still charm him. Since he has no magical defense, the strong toy here essentially is on our side now. Okay, he has no physical armor, which means we can control him. Backstep uh, right over there. And bam, knock him down. Very nice. Leaving only magical trump toy. Who has surprisingly hard physical attacks? But luckily, since we skilled a bit in Polymorph. Saiken has no problem when he's been focused to reposition himself. And heal. Good. Beautiful. It works in our favor because the charmed uh, opponent uses all of his nasty abilities on the enemy. In the meantime, we're taking away the physical armor of the last enemy. Rosa begins to heal herself. Let's buff everyone, because that's going to heal everyone, plus make their crit chance higher. 
And since we're on it, nice little totem doesn't hurt either. Yep, hits 480. Could we continue to control this guy over here? Nice little knockdown. In terms of healing, Ifan might want to heal himself. That's good. And this is not even the end fight. This is simply normal enemy fight. All right, let's get rid of the physical armor of the last Tromptoy. Sagan hastes himself. And I'm okay where we are. Both of these guys are taking additional fire damage now. Got to deal with this Trompto here, by the way. All right. But we've almost killed the first Trump toy. Time to put the second one down there. Perfect positioning. And whilst we're on it, the incarnate is still standing. Well, not anymore. Okay. <laughs> the one shots. Can't get him out of Frozen, unfortunately. All right, let's move over here. And we're trying the resurrection thing again. Putting Sibyl out of line of sight mainly. Sibyl heals herself, takes a different position. Gosh, this is just a warm-up fight. When I'm thinking about how hard the actual fight is going to be... I'm slightly concerned. 
Yeah, we can't just continue. Uh, we need to A, drink a potion, and B, also get, uh, get some armor. I don't want her to be one shot again. It starts getting ridiculous. Yeah, luckily I upgraded the shields, otherwise this would have been really, really bad. Unfortunately, our flight is still down. And we have way too much armor on him, so that's not going to. We can't really control him at the moment. What we can do is we can somewhat reduce the problem, which in this case would be let's teleport him over here. And essentially let him waste the turn on moving over. Because he has already used his shield throw. Good, let's cluster them up again. We're slowing them down, and I want to make sure that Trompdoy is entangled, crippled. Yep, that worked. Good, taking a shot, putting them into a difficult position. Almost got their magical defenses down. Let's make ourselves invisible just so that the shield um, bash is not going to hit us. The shield throw. Upgrading magical resistance. Making ourselves immune against physical attack. And next turn should really focus on dealing damage. I feel since the values um, of magic, uh, armor, and just general um, stat progression are unfortunately not linear but rather exponential that the mod is go uh, going to make it more difficult as time passes by. We're fighting against 700 armor and it's just getting worse and worse. Not even getting his armor down. I mean, I get it. Trompto is undead, right? So poison heals him, but it feels almost every single ability that we're using is only dealing marginal damage to them.
Okay, I'm going to try to nuke down one of them. Good, so the physical Tromtoy is frozen in place. He can't move. Putting another incarnate up. And one of the problems, by the way, is besides the um, Besides the exponential stat progression, normally you are also getting higher level skills, just simply really, really powerful skills that can deal with the exponential growth. Like, it's not a problem any uh, if, if you just deal thousands of points of damage. But if you do not have access to those skills, things turn out to be quite difficult. Good. So that's a knockdown. Let's make sure Ephon here survives. Next turn we're going to contaminate and then afterwards ignite right away. Clear mind ourselves for some extra damage. And let's take away his armor. Contaminate. Slow him down. Very nice. Fire explosion. Trump is almost down. Still uses his damn shield for a hundred eighty throws. Almost got us down again. Damn you, Trump Doy. Alright. Knocked him down. We're going to kill this Tromptoy. Trying to be a bit conservative with potions. And instead just use healing magic. Good. One, two, three shots, and Trompta is down, execution. Let's 
So once we have it under control, <clears throat> and control, I can control the enemy, things are actually turning out to be relatively easy. But until that point, the one-shots, that's pretty harsh. Okay, we finally, finally, finally got him almost to the point where he's down. Crippled, burning, and he explodes. Chickened on top of it. And he's anticlimactically killed by a spider. Whew. And that's just a warm up. 30 minutes in. I think we need a second episode for this. I wasn't expecting it at all. But yeah, maybe we need a second episode for this. Got ourselves quite some loot here. Yeah, of course. So, let's see. We got a pair of pens. Yeah, and we need a higher uh, lore master level. Never mind. Okay, so that's pretty much part one. Still got a few traps here. Careful. And soon we're going to go to part number two, which includes the real fight against uh, him. For the real fight, but I'll explain it in the next session as well. There's just going to be one uh, real Trump toy and a lot of quote unquote fake mirrors. All of the fake uh, mirror images will deal the exact same amount of damage and will essentially be, in some cases, uh, more dangerous enemies, but uh, you don't need to kill them in order to get Trump toy down. Yeah, normally you're supposed to be level 6 when you're here, and the enemies are supposed to be level 5. We're fighting level 11 enemies, and I can already tell that it's pretty hard. Good. Gotta open the store here, and that's also where we're going to end our episode. This here is where we're going to start the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy Divinity Original Sins 2, the content in here, please give it a like and a comment down below, and we're going to see us in the next episode. Thanks, and have a great day. Bye-bye.